forward to speaking to you because you're someone who's so honest and there was no better example of that than the way you got involved having a laugh with Dennis when you walked down the stairs having been introduced as Williams. It's the pistol, Mark Williams! <laughs> What's your second name again? Mark Allen, ladies and gentlemen! Yeah, you had to have a bit of fun. Like, I, I wouldn't fancy doing Dennis's job, but it was funny being introduced as Mark Williams and I had to give him a bit of stick saying he's getting sacked in the morning <laughs> and uh, bring back Rob Walker. <laughs> well, I, I didn't ask you to say that. But, but the, the interesting thing about that is you weren't offended and it didn't interrupt your momentum in the match, and you are someone, I think, who reacts quite well on the big occasions in the big matches. Yeah, I, th I think that's something just about my personality, really. I, I try and have fun when I'm out there, when it's in the build-up to it, or during the match, I try and enjoy myself, because you know, I'm very, very fortunate to do what I do for a living, so you have to try and enjoy it as well. So do you think, looking back then, you're on three ranking titles, two of which came in China, and you won the PTC Grand Finals, would you have expected more silverware by now, bearing in mind how long you have been around the top 16? Well, I hope it doesn't sound like an arrogant thing, but I did expect more. Uh, I came in on the back of a really good amateur record and I, won, I was used to winning. Uh, I've won nine times on tour and for me it's not quite enough. Uh, I'd be the first to admit that there was a few years that I didn't work hard enough and probably got what I deserved on the table results-wise. but. In general, I, I feel like I've worked really, really hard throughout my career, bar the, maybe that year or 18 months when I was struggling uh, in myself. But it's a tough sport. You know, there can only be one winner of any event, and the likes of Ronnie, you know, Henry in the past, you know, John Higgins, you know, they make winning look really easy, and it's not that easy. Uh, the strength and depth in the game at the minute is as good as it's ever been, and I'm still very, very happy that I've won nine times, but... Yeah, it would be nice to just push on and win some more, especially in the big Triple Crown events. The other element of you that, that I like is, is your honesty about yourself, and you've been really public about struggling with depression. And I can remember a, a brilliant moment where you displayed so much emotion. I wonder what your recollections are of this. Again, it was a World Championship. I think it might have been 2011, when you came from 9-6 down against Matthew, and I think you needed to win that first round match to stay in the 16 and you'd been you'd, you know you'd said you'd been struggling with depression and your reaction at the end was amazing do you recall can you uh, recall that with as much clarity as i can sort of i do remember it i think it was nine seven in that match i felt like i was just going to smash the reds off the break off i felt so low i just didn't really want to be there i wasn't enjoying it and something just clicked in me that like that fighting spirit just clicked and i didn't do it and i managed to obviously come back and win the match 10-9 and uh, I remember Lauren actually was sitting in the front row of the crowd and you know that that's something I'll always remember but yeah it was a dark dark time you know getting through that match was a, a big big plus for me both on and off the table kept me in the top 16 and yeah moved on from there but it wasn't a nice place to be during that match you know at 9-6 down it felt very very low. And how big has Kyla been in you know helping you create a more content home life and, and it's nice to it's nice to see you happy yeah, when we see you in the press room and you're having a cup of tea, you seem like you've reached a level of contentment that maybe a few years ago when you were struggling, you didn't have. Yeah, possibly. I think uh, for me, relationships are a big thing, whether it's family, friends or you no know, partners. Uh, over the years, that's something that I spoke to whenever I was seeing a psychologist and something he pinpointed that seemed to be the root of my problems. But Kyla's been like a godsend, like really. It's just, she's a complete lunatic at times, which is good for me as well. But... Uh, as a whole, she sort of keeps me level-headed, feet on the ground, and uh, yeah, obviously we've got a little daughter together now, steps on that lives with us, so yeah, family life's really, really good. Do you think people outside the circuit maybe underestimate the difficulties of being away from home for such a long time? Because an outsider might perceive your life to be very glamorous, and I'm sure you're grateful for the living that Snook has enabled you to have for, for yourself and your family. But it's not as glamorous as people think it is, is it? No, I, and like, but for first things first, I am very, very grateful for what the game's given me. But people will never understand what we go through as sports people and being away from home so much. And yeah, people say try a nine to five and see how you like that. But even if you did have a nine to five, you get home to see your family every single day, and that's something that we don't do. 
you know, living out of a suitcase, staring at four walls in a hotel room, you know, eating room service on your own nearly every night. It's it's not all it's cracked up to be, but the actual competing side, going out there playing in front of big arenas, you no know, live on TV, the later stages of events, you no, know, that's not obviously great, great, great buzz. And and in and it, and in its purest sense, you still you still love the sport. It's still the sport that you were inspired to take part in when when you first watched Paul Hunter play Stephen yeah. Lee all those years ago. That's right, well remembered or well looked up, whatever it is. But uh, yeah, it, it's something that. It's strange because I've played it for so long now and you'd think that desire would sort of start to wane a little bit but it still kills me every time I lose a match and you know, it's, the, it's the end of the world for the next couple of hours or couple of days. Uh, the highs of winning don't quite match the lows of losing for some strange reason. I think it's built in is that we don't enjoy our wins as much as we probably should but look I, I really love the game. I've been practicing as hard as ever in recent years and I think with my stepson Robbie playing snooker now it's given me a new lease of life because I can sort of try and pass things on to him and try and teach him what not to do, the mistakes I made in the past. And it's it's great for me watching him grow and seeing how much he loves the game. And I think that's rubbing off on me again. Well, it's always a delight to see you in amongst the balls. Thanks very much for your honesty once again. Cheers, mate. Thanks.